I want to start off by saying thank you to Alexi Varanich for participating in this project and also agreeing to answer some questions that we have. Also, I want to thank you for the 3D data that you supplied on the site. Right here, you're looking at the 3D file that I put together based on photogrammetry. And then underneath that, I have these stones that I've roughed out. So even though I've accounted for all 368 stones that I can see in the photogrammetry data, they're very rough. And it's nice to have Alexi Varanich's stones because I can replace some of the cubed shaped stones with exactly measured stones. And so that's what I've done here. I've, the yellow stones were Alexi Varanich's stones and I've repositioned them to match what I'm finding on the photogrammetry data. And so now if I go down into the map, the rough photogrammetry data also contains either a rough stone or an exact stone. The only stones that I wasn't able to locate on the photogrammetry map were these 11 back here. And I'm pretty sure if I spent a little bit more time at it, I would be able to locate most of them. There's also these three stones that don't seem to have any volume to them. So I, I don't know if anybody else is running into that. I need to go back and check the original files again. So one of the things that I wanted to look at once I got the actual correct size 3D data were these three basin stones. And they're located back here currently. And I'm specifically looking at these three. And I'm just curious about their relationship to the H block and so there's the basins in the place where they were originally found. And when I move it over to the, quote, altar space, the basin really does fit very well front to back. It doesn't fit side to side, but the dimension front to back is almost exact. And then so when I slide it under an H block, It fits very nicely. And what I found more interesting was the hole, the square at the bottom. If you go into it, it has two openings that fit very nice down into the two basins. I'm wondering if it is in an ideal space to ferment grains. So another interesting thing is when I use the Rosetta Stone block of Puma Punku and I size it correctly to the H block and then I go over to this other andesite block and I pick it up, they almost match the height. So I'm wondering if this block isn't kind of an indication of a standard wall height. So in another program, I used these crosses down the center to make a, a mirrored mesh. And the interesting thing about that to me is that without it forcing anything, it sizes almost correctly to the platform. And I'm wondering if each one of these doorway spaces would have had a door or metal covering over the opening. I'm wondering what your thoughts on that are. And then moving to the roof, I'm wondering what your thoughts on what a roof should look like. Your research shows a gabled roof, and I'm wondering if the Tiwanaku's influenced the Incas, which influenced the modern day construction, which uses the either Ichu or tutorial reeds that are growing locally. And then underneath the thatched roof system, do you think that there's a wooden support system that would have held up a thatched roof? I'm also curious about your ideas on the sun gate and the position of the sun gate. I could see it being positioned here on the platform. I also remember seeing this in National Geographic, where they had positioned the sun gate on the other side of the terrace. In general, I'm just wondering if you had any thoughts on the sun gate. I also found a file pack of Tiwanaku stones online. There's about 17 stones, and it includes this stone. I'm wondering if you have measured this stone, if this is something that you've already included in the file pack and I just missed. I've included them in this email, so everybody can take a look. And now, thinking about the terrace structure, I'm assuming that it's kind of a 
demonstration of raised field agriculture. It's my understanding that Tiwanaku was surrounded by raised field agriculture. And then also I've seen that they've found foundations in between the two historic sites. And do those foundations indicate raised field agriculture or a densely populated town? I'm, I'm wondering what your thoughts on that are. I'm curious about your thoughts on the complexity of the math problem we're trying to solve here. Lego boasts 100 million possible solutions for every six of their building blocks. And that increases exponentially with the addition of every block. Um, mathematicians actually say, no, that's incredibly wrong. It's not 100 million, it's 900 million for every six blocks. So any way you slice it, it's a very difficult problem. And it seems simplistic, just like Legos seem simplistic, but looking at a pile of Legos without instructions or a box is virtually impossible to determine the original form factor. And so in a sense, we're dealing with chaos theory. Taking the math further, 100 million combinations would take you three years to try at one second a try. Uh, 900 million would take you 28 years. There needs to be a resource created that can brute force attack the possible combinations. The program I use to create visualizations is actually a gaming engine. So I set up a simple game using the stones of Tiwanaku. Ultimately, I think that a game like this offered to the public in a VR setting would allow you to gather the most data on possible combinations over time. I'm interested to hear if you've explored this possibility and if you hit any roadblocks pursuing it. That's all I have for now, so I will just have my friend play Chopin over the rest of my visualization for now. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Bye.